Hello YouTube, uh, got something a little bit different today. Insta360 just released a new version of its Link webcam and it's cheaper, which is uh, great news for people who care about having money. Um, I think its closest competitor is the Obsbot Tiny2 Lite, which came out a few months ago. Similar price, similar specifications, and uh, yeah, I wanted to know which one's better. So I've done a quick head-to-head -head comparison of both of them. It's not sponsored. I know a lot of Insta360 content that comes out on launch day tends to be sponsored and it can be hard to find an objective comparison of this stuff. So hopefully this gives you a better idea and let's get into it and take a look. Okay, so let's start with a quick look at the hardware of these two webcams. Uh, quite similar designs. Obviously the new Insta360 Link 2 has a much chunkier camera housing. Whereas the Obspot Tiny 2 Lite's more what we're used to seeing. Still reasonably chunky, but it's more compact. I think the main reason for that is the new microphone unit, which you can see on the top here. It reminds me of the Sony ZV-1. It faces upwards and you've got a large grill on the top for the microphone. Elsewhere, you've got a massive indicator LED that encircles this. It looks like a touchpad area, but it's not. It's just a little concave area, and there's a large LED indicator around that. Comparatively, you have a tiny little LED in the corner of the lens. Does it matter? No, you can tell when both of them are on, and that's all the indicator's for, really. The Obsbot has a built-in flip-out monitor stand and a quarter twenty thread, so you can attach it to a tripod. Two microphones on the front. USB-C on the back. The Link 2 is a little bit different in that the there's no mount attached anymore. It comes as a separate piece and I mean it does the same job but it just attaches with a very strong magnet. Then you've got your pull-out monitor stand and a quarter 20 threaded mount for your tripod. As for why we've got a magnetic design, Insta360 haven't really said but there are some pogo pin contacts on the bottom. So I'm certain we'll be seeing some kind of magnetically attachable accessories in the future. Will they be worth buying? Uh, no idea. No idea what they're gonna release. But I think that's gotta be the reason for this new magnetic thing. However, you can, as I found out, you can stick this to the side of your PC case or microphone arm or all kinds of things, anything magnetic so it is useful that it's magnetic um, but I think the real intended use is going to be whatever those accessories end up being. We've got a touch sensitive area on the front I think we have on both of them actually so you can tap here if you don't want to use gesture controls and you don't want to use the app and yeah that's about it for the hardware so let's see how the images compare. Okay so I've got these two webcams set up um, they're both in their default settings. They're both at 4K 30 frames per second, which is the maximum each of them can do. We're using the built-in microphone on both of them. We're going to switch back and forth. Obviously, we're going to switch back and forth between the cameras as appropriate and show them side by side. I've got quite a complicated setup. I'm using a laptop and a desktop. I tried to record them both into the same computer. It just wasn't having it. It wasn't working. So now we've got a, a laptop with the Insta360 and a desktop with the Obspot, and hopefully we won't have any more issues. I will have to keep looking off to the side to see both the screens. Um, but yeah, what can you do? So off the bat, I think the Insta360 Link is a lot more contrasty uh, and a bit more saturated, and there's a lot of sharpening going on. Personally, I think the Obspot default profile looks a bit better. But you can tweak the way the image looks really easily. And I've made this quick little preset, which I think helps things. I think that's a much more natural, pleasing look, but it's up to you. You might like the really sharp look. But yeah, this is the kind of image you can expect from these two webcams. So if I turn AI tracking on, see how they do following me around the room. I won't stand up too quickly because that's when they tend to lose me the most is when I quickly get up out of my chair. They are right next to each other, so when I go off to the left, like, 
the link's going to see the odds, but, but not a lot I can do about that. Notice the exposure. I look like I'm uh, better exposed on the link. Whereas Obspot's doing a good job with the whole room, but like my clothes look a little bit dark, I think. Let's see how they do focusing when I get up close and move further away. Now I'm going to hide behind this chair and see how they do losing tracking and resuming tracking. It's the 360 you've lost me, but if I get my head back in the frame, there we go. Yeah, there, neither lost me there. It depends, it depends how they lose you. I think Obspot is a little bit better to be honest. It just tends to lose me less often. I've got this little Gundam figure here and uh, I'm just going to do a quick rack focusing test. I'm going to hold it up to the camera like this and then back to my face and see how each one does. Probably want about that distance, right? Pretty quick, pretty quick on the up spot. Now the link. Also pretty good. Yeah, there's not a lot in it. Both have got really good autofocus. So if you like to showcase products in your videos or your streams, I don't think you're gonna have much trouble. I've now switched both cameras into HDR mode. The Insta360 link is back in its default color profile. And this is the kind of image you get. Definitely getting better dynamic range from the Insta360 link from the looks of things. Like I can actually see a bit out the back door where the sun's shining through. There's like nothing there on the uh, behind my head on the ob spot. That's just white. But maybe if I stand up, let's get tracking turned on. I've turned off gesture controls because they were both going mad with me holding my hands up all the time. No, I don't think either are doing an amazing job there. So yeah, better better dynamic range on the Insta360 for sure. Neither are exceptional. Both are better than your average webcam. Okay, so both of these webcams have their own built-in noise reduction stuff. I think the Insta360 Link 2 is a little more advanced than the Obspot, but the Obspot does have different settings for noise reduction. So I'm just going to play some crowd sound effects on my phone. Hopefully it should sound like there's people talking nearby and I'm trying to talk over them. By default, the noise reduction is set to weak. If I set it to medium, that's what that sounds like. And if I set it to strong, there's how that sounds. Does it make a difference? I don't know. You tell me. And here's with noise reduction off altogether. Try the same thing with some music. Christmassy. So here's with noise reduction off. Here's with it set to weak. Here's medium. And here's strong. Okay, now same test using the Insta360 link. Uh, this time we'll start with music, and by default, the camera is set to voice focus mode, which I think is just going to get rid of the music pretty much completely. So can you hear that music? I don't know, but I can hear it pretty loud. Now we're in music balance, which should give you like an equal amount of my voice and the music. We also have voice suppression. I don't really know what that's going to do, but switch back to voice focus. I'll do a crowd sound effect again. So now we've got people talking in the background, obviously not real people, but we're in voice focus, so you might not hear them at all. Music balance 
which give us quite a different sound. And voice suppression should hopefully get rid of them entirely, but we'll see if it works. Each camera has its own artificial background blur effect mode in the software. This one's called Bokeh, which is supposed to simulate like a DSLR background. Doesn't look that convincing to me. I think Nvidia Broadcast does a better job. Um, I can turn the blur down. If I turn it down to like 15%, maybe that's doing better. It's always the fingers that trip it up on the side of my headphones usually. It looks okay at 20%. Here's like 44. Yeah, not that convincing. There's also a full background blur, which is supposed to protect privacy, but like, look, that that doesn't look great, does it? So, and this is the OBSPOTS version. We're on bokeh mode, uh, blur level six, which I believe is the default. But unfortunately, this one you can't adjust while you're recording. Okay, so as you can see, it got dark. Uh, it's quite a well-lit room. I've got a lot of lights around me, as you can see. Uh, is that any more than your average streamer setup? Maybe not. Um, I do have a big key light on my face. Uh, we'll turn that off in a bit to see what it looks like when it's even darker. But I think this is a pretty typical low-light streaming setup. Um, I'm in a conservatory and it's raining, so there is some rain sounds on the roof. It's not too loud at the minute, but it'd be interesting to see if the microphones pick that up. I don't think the Insta360 will because uh, that noise suppression is so aggressive that should all be cut out. In terms of image quality difference, uh, obviously the Insta360 profile is a lot more contrasty. It looks like it, overall it's just a little bit of a darker exposure. Both have a little bit of noise, but neither of them look too bad. So let's just do a quick test. We use this fancy little uh, earpod case. So here's how the OBSPOT does. Switching between macro focus and my face. And now the Insta360. Took a bit longer. But it gets there. Not too bad. There has been a firmware update in between my recording in the day and my recording at night for the Insta360, which said it will improve AI tracking. So let's see how it does. Now the chair's the big test. Both did a bit worse there. Yeah. Come on. There we go. And if we give them more of a chance. Mm. Obsbot's still doing better. Yeah. So maybe slightly worse than in the day. Definitely slightly worse than in the day, but uh, not too bad in either case. Now if I turn this key light off, that's when my face just lit with the monitor. In fact, why don't we turn off all the lights, see how each one looks there. Okay, so that's about everything for this one. Um, I think the image quality is very comparable between these two cameras. Like I said, I do prefer the default look of the OBSPOT, but it's really easy to tweak the Insta360 and get it looking basically identical. The biggest difference, in my opinion, is the microphones, but I think most people who are spending this much on a webcam are gonna have some kind of mic of their own and they might not be using the built-in microphone at all. But if you are using the built-in mic, Insta360's noise cancelling stuff is way more advanced. It gives you a bit more vocal presence, but I don't think it sounds that natural. Um, really, I'd advise using a proper microphone with either of these cameras. But yeah, they're both good. They're both good value. Um, Obspot's slightly cheaper, 
so that might be the way to go but the Insta360 is brand new this price is probably going to come down and of course if you don't need the gimbal there's also the Insta360 Link 2C which is the same thing without the gimbal and it's the cheapest of the lot anyway hope you found this useful uh, if you did hit subscribe because I got loads more camera comparison stuff on the way and I'll catch you in the next one. Toodles.